I need a really good, awkward, heartfelt comedy. Let's talk to the filmmakers behind Half Brothers. Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I am Chris Gore. I hope you're having a good holiday season. It is a holiday season in 2020, so things can be a little weird. But if you are looking for a heartfelt comedy, I've got one for you. This movie took me totally by surprise. Um, you need to, uh, after this, you need to go check out the trailer and then you need to see the movie because it is in theaters December 4th and coming video on demand on Christmas Day, December 25th. Uh, Half Brothers. Let's bring on the director, Luke Greenfield, and the writers, Eduardo Cisneros and Jason Schumann. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Doing good. Yeah, Glad to be here. I have to say, your movie really did take me by surprise. I mean, it took me by surprise in the sense that, one, it had so much heart. That opening scene, like, um, the, I just don't think that, I, I can't even recall this year where I've seen such a great father-son relationship that was so built up. It's heartbreaking a lot of what happens in the film. Yeah. And then when it hits, um, when it hits the mark where the half brothers meet, it's uh, hilarity ensues. So thank you for that. Um, how did this whole thing come together? Uh, like, like uh, just in the in the writing, what was your thinking? And then um, I have to also compliment you on the casting for this. The, your two leads are incredible. Thank but, you. But tell me, yeah, tell me about like just the whole concept for this. Well, the story, uh, the, the story behind the story set starts about seven years ago. I had the fortune of uh, working closely with a very talented man called Eugenio Derbez. And him and I co-wrote uh, this movie called Instructions Unincluded. And in a similar vein of a movie that tricks you into thinking it's just a lighthearted comedy. And then once you're watching it, it punches you in the gut. So. Uh, it, after that movie came out in 2013, um, I, I, I was very inspired by the success of that movie in two things. And one, the way it brought out the Latinx community and the way people were lining up to watch this movie. Uh, and, and another part was kind of bringing back a little bit of the spirit of the, the kind of movie that you would only see probably in foreign films. You, you only see the, this combination of this uh, um, um, kind of very honest approach to both comedy and emotion that sometimes in the US we're very maybe removed and, and not as in touch with that. So I think there are a lot of movies in Brazil, Italy, France that are unashamed to just show emotions, show humor. Uh, so I started working with uh, Ali Leroy in a version of the story, and eventually uh, became writing partners with uh, Jason Schumann. Um, and we started shaping the story, and we presented to that to an actor that I admired a lot, who is Luis Gerardo Mendez, uh, and uh, brought it to focus, and then uh, shared our passion and our vision and a lot of the elements of what I just mentioned with with uh, uh, another person whose work I admire, which is Luke Greenfield, mm -hmm. uh, and here we are. Well, Jason, what about uh, meeting up with Eduardo and, and working on this project? I uh, Two things. One was Eduardo was very uh, interested in the theme of empathy and something that's obviously going on a lot right now, but even years ago when we first started talking about the movie was the idea that like Mexico and America, we're so close to each other. We're like brothers, we're like neighbors, we're siblings, but yet we can't seem to understand each other. We can't seem to get along. And if we only just took a time to like know each other a little bit, maybe, and walk in each other's shoes, uh, maybe we could understand each other more. So that was sort of the, the building blocks of the movie. And then I, I really did love the, doing a movie comedically from the point of view of the Mexican uh, coming to America. We always see, uh, you've seen so many movies of the American going and being a fish out of water in someone else's culture. We loved the idea of bringing the, the flip, 
the seeing Luis, his character, coming to America with all his preconceived notions. So he has just as much to learn about empathy as anyone in the movie. It's not just some sort of didactic thing. We're trying to tell, what we're trying to say that everybody needs a little bit of it, but wanted to have a lot of laughs, a lot of heart, a lot of fun along the way. That's when I really knew that this film was was something, you know, more than a light comedy is that fish out of water that we hadn't quite seen before. I thought that was that was like the scene in the taxi cab. Right. And you've got uh, I, I thought that that was I thought that was so I love that. It's just refreshing. I mean, I, I grew up and I feel like we would all benefit from this. Just, I grew up watching world cinema. My mom was a huge cinema geek told me, don't go to the mall to see movies, go to the art house. So I grew up watching cinema from all over the world. So uh, I, I thought I thought that this was refreshing. Um, and just, and, and also Luke, to compliment you visually, I mean, it's like there are parts of it that are like a cartoon. I mean, this in a good way, especially that opening scene and some aspects of it. I mean, just like really fun. And there are some over the top, ridiculous, like cartoon like, situations. Sure. Tell me about your visual approach to kind of hammer home some of those other themes. Yeah. You know, I go way back with Jason Schumann. So we, we went to film school together. And so, you know, <laughs> we when did the movie role models together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that film. Yeah. yeah. We, so, we, so we go way back. He sent me the script. What I, one of the main reasons why I wanted to make the film was to blend genres, right? Is that what I saw here was a grounded buddy comedy. And then I saw a very dramatic, heartbreaking, somewhat tragic uh, story of a man trying to keep his family alive and, and, and come to America. And so, you know, visually it gave us a lot of, so, you know, so basically I wanted that balance, you know, can, you know, can us filmmakers make a movie that right from laughing, you can shift into crying and then back into laughing. And so visually, you know, we normally do a lot of prep before even pre-production, but we, we really planned out what the look of these two stories are gonna be, right? And they have very different looks. And even from the beginning, the goal was to open up on Mexico and portray a gorgeous Mexico, a beautiful Mexico. You know, coming up in American cinema, you know, we all love Sicario and traffic and, you know, but they just kind of portray the cartel world of Mexico. And we, and it was very symbolic to show this, this gorgeous background to begin this beautiful relationship between this father and son, right? And so, you know, and that's why we shot widescreen anamorphic and, you know, really did a different kind of color and feel for both stories. You know, the father story is so, is so kind of uh, devoid, it, it, it kind of deteriorates and kind of like uh, Luis's journey begins off very cold, very cold blues and grays. And then as he thaws, it starts to warm up and the, the color red is very symbolic in this film. So we, you know, we kind of went in having a very, very strong game plan because this, this was a tiny movie. It's a tiny budget movie and it wasn't a small movie it was a it was a medium sized movie on a very tiny budget, which was you know we're, we're the little movie that could, you know. <laughs> it didn't feel that way for sure. I mean, it feels grand in scope. The fact that it like takes place over decades, um, I, I really feel like the the father's story I think is so grounding. It's so uh, uh, emotional. It it's like yes, there is sort of bits of wacky comedy woven in, but yeah. then you hit, you get, you get grounded with that relationship. How was it for the, I, I mentioned the casting earlier. Um, I feel like I want to see your two leads in an ongoing series. I don't know if there's been discussions. <laughs> it, I, seriously, I kind of feel like this, you know, I would like to see their continuing misadventures. Yeah. Um, but what went into casting them and, you know, pairing that, pairing them up? Just, I'll just well, jump in, Luke. That that was uh, Luke. Really had a vision for for the brother. He he really because we had Luis and we knew what type he was and what the character he was going to play. Yeah. And then it was just Luke going out there and auditioning and 
watching everything he could and really trying to find the person that he himself and we would want to sit next to in a car for the whole ride and, and sort of like have that mismatch, that classic mismatch. Yeah. I mean, look, another look. part of it was we really wanted this movie to play in a weird way from both sides. Like you can watch it as a person who will watch it in Mexico and see it as a Mexican movie in the perspective of that character and almost feel like it's a Mexican movie. And then you want to be able to sit on this side, watch it as an American, watch it with the American humor, sensibility, et cetera. So it was a very tricky part to, to try to cast the people who would be bilingual, who could play the Spanish speaking parts perfectly, but also had the timing in English and who could play that, that part as well. So uh, it was a balancing act for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, I, I think I think you really reached it perfectly. And, and also, like, I guess I'm just used to watching films that have subtitles, so I never pay attention to it. And I thought <laughs> it was just like a perfect blend uh, of uh, both sides. And I'm glad you brought up empathy at the beginning of the conversation. I feel like this is something our world could use a little bit more of today. Um, it's so much more of, and this film really, really hits at home. I mean, um, well, I mean, I guess you could say, um, you know, uh, the film is, has, you know, the themes, you know, being, you know, at least initially set in Mexico. It just, I feel like that everything about it, the themes and the ideas are all universal. Yeah. I feel like it has broad appeal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, can you speak about that? Or was there any issue with that? Like, um, I just think, feel like it, it It just nailed it on all those levels. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's interesting because I think, you know, in all our meetings on the script and, and, and talking about things, you know, the three of us, the other producer, Jason, Luis, you know, we were all digging deep into our father story. You know, I mean, I, I, had, to, I had to do something I didn't want to do, which was dig deep into my father issues and my parents' divorce. And so... I mean, there are a lot of universal things here because, you know, it's empathy and it's forgiveness. And we all get angry at our parents. We all get angry at our siblings or friends. Um, but it's really, you know, Eduardo always articulates this really well, is that walk in the other person's shoes, experience what they've experienced to really understand their point of view and understand them, understand them as people more. I think that's a real universal, a universal thing. And a lot of the, when you, thank you for saying that it felt universal because Eduardo and I believe that themes, especially if you get specific, that all our cultures are, have a lot of similarities when you actually get into the specifics, especially a parent uh, uh, and a child relationship and, so even though I'm from one part of the world, Eduardo's from another, when we initially were coming together to, to write a story about two different cultures, we, we amongst the two writers were from different cultures. So we were bringing that to the script, but then we each had our own father issues, which we were putting right into the story. And then to give it to Luke and have Luke call us and say, this reminded me so much of my father. And then he put his personal stuff into the story. It became so specific and so personal to all of us that we're, it, it really is heartfelt to hear that that specificity can hopefully be seen by a lar large amount of people and have them resonate with it too, because it is universal at, at its core. Yeah. Well, I feel like your your screenwriter pairing explains everything now. I feel like that explains everything about this movie. I want to ask, without any spoilers, please, about Eloise. I thought the journey to find Eloise was so... Uh, I, I just enjoyed that aspect, trying to repeat something, a game the father played with his son as a kid, I thought was fantastic. And the search for Eloise... Were there discussions about Eloise and this journey and the people that you meet along the way? And again, please know nothing from the act, third act, please. But like, t tell me about that. I just thought that was so, that was, uh, once once you get on that ride, um, there's just so many unexpected heartfelt moments. It was the reason I made the movie. I mean, I'll let Jason and Eduardo, you know, discuss their creation of it. But when I first, when Jason first sent me the script, do you remember this, Jason? I said, look, I don't know who's directing this film, but if they don't get that scene right, you have no movie, right? 
when we were on the day when we were shooting the scene, he said to the whole crew, you know, a couple hundred people, hey, everyone, if I mess this up, I've blown the movie. <laughs> so he knew it. But, but I'll let Eduardo get into the specifics because he knows how to not mess it up. <laughs> well, I think that um, it, it definitely we wanted to create a, a journey that becomes in a way more important than the destination, right? Not that, not that the place where they arrive at is not important, but we were very inspired by movies uh, like Central Station, Philomena. Um, we all watch those type of movies. Cinema where Paradiso. Every Cinema Paradiso. Right, but, but specifically about road movies where every stop counts and um, we wanted every, everything to be a, the pieces of a puzzle that will shine that light into um, into what this character went through and that you would understand that you had to be there to understand what happened. And, and not only that, but to, to the theme of empathy, sometimes the reason why we can't easily uh, slip into other person's shoes and see things from their perspective is because we don't have the ability to communicate with each other, right? So in a way, uh, Flavio understands, again, without giving too much away, but Flavio understands that words are not his thing, clearly. <laughs> it's tried this before. So he's gonna speak in the language as an engineer and the language that really made him bond with, with his son and in engineering terms and in very physical and architectural terms explain his version of the story. You know, like, right, maybe writing a letter is not my thing. Maybe doing, creating this, we see it a little bit as, a, as an engineer with a roller coaster. And seeing this in those terms kind of gave Flavio uh, the opportunity to communicate with both his children. I, I really think that that's uh, the heart and soul of the film. It's fine. Luke, you didn't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't no, screw it up. Perfect. It, it, you know, it's funny. I, on that day, too, you know, Luis and I have a, have a very funny relationship. And he was mentally preparing. Uh, but before he started mentally preparing for that moment, I looked at him. And I said, you screw this up. The, the whole movie's a failure. Good luck. <laughs> and I walked, I walked back to the <laughs> Yeah, it just it's it's definitely in in a group of films like about fathers and sons. I think we probably need more of. Now, I think the other thing that it reminded me of this is going to seem weird, like Field of Dreams, right? Like but that was that was one of my. I mean, honestly, oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. when we were talking early on, it was Great Santini, it was the Field Field of Dreams, Cinema Paradiso. I mean, th those were the movies that I was Rain Man. I was mm -hmm. constantly looking at these films and. And, uh, you know, I mean, all of those movies have such an emotional punch in the end. Yeah. Cinema Paradiso, Cinema Paradiso is like, I mean, you just can't beat that ending, you know? Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up. It's just like passing on, you know, not just lessons and, and being a good father, but also like the passion, right? Like the passion for engineering. I, I, I just, uh, I don't know. I never thought I'd say that a movie hit home like that, a passion for engineering. Yeah. Um, but it does. I feel like it's a language that that um, because I think that as men, maybe we're not as well equipped to speak about emotions. So we use a proxy. And for a lot of men, it's sports yep. or things like, you know, engineering or, yep. you know, planes, uh, yep. you know, like stuff like that. So we find some other way to to express that love. Um, and I, I can't wait for audiences to see this, too. Because I think it's a real crowd pleaser, this film, um, and and it's one of those ones that like look if you can see it in a the theater, definitely do that, and it's safe to do that. Drive-ins, I'm mean, going to the drive-in every week, yeah, um, and uh, or, or catch it on video on demand. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. Um, uh, any any final thoughts you'd like to express uh, to our audience about about the film? Well, I'd I certainly mean, like to convey that if, if you liked Instructions Not Included, if you like Field of Dreams, if you like multicultural stories and comedy and fun and heart, like, please check it out. Because there was a lot of love, a, a lot of our, our own uh, person, you know, our, 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 our real heart and soul that went into this movie. And we're, and we're very proud of it. Yeah. 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 
Well, congratulations, everyone. Uh, Half Brothers, uh, you will not be disappointed. You're going to have a good time. You're going to laugh. Uh, and uh, more than likely, you're probably going to cry. I'm just going <laughs> like, I, I think, I think uh, yeah. Uh, so get ready for that. Thanks again. Congratulations. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you.